So your boss wants you to make an Excel dashboard? You have come to the right place. In this video, we are going to make an interactive, beautiful and elegant Excel dashboard. And here is the best part. This one is really simple to make. All you need is some pivot tables, charts and a little bit of Excel magic. So what do you say? Let's go and impress your boss. Here is our dynamic business dashboard. It shows what's happening at our business level, how much sales, how many boxes and profit we have, top 5 products and key trends along with a table showing our salesperson performance. And it is interactive too. I can go to a different category. I can select any specific product to see what's happening to that. In order to create this, I'm using some really simple pivot tables, just seven to be exact. And that's it, nothing else. There are no complex formulas, no complicated Excel logic, nothing else really. To help you go through this process and make this dashboard, I have created a blank file as well. This file just has the data and a layout page. So we are going to use this blank file and turn it into the final dashboard. So let's go. Let's take a quick look at the data here. This is the data for a fictional chocolate company called Awesome Chocolates. And here I have salesperson, product, date, how much sales they have made, how many boxes they sold, what is the expenditure and what category is the product belonging to. So a really simple data with just about 4000 rows of information. Whenever you are designing a dashboard, the first thing to understand is what sort of a layout and information we are going to present. This is a good place to kind of talk to your end users. So if you have a executive who wants to read this dashboard or if you have a customer who wants to look at this dashboard on a periodic basis, talk to them, ask them what is it that you would like to see and how you would like this information to be presented. That will give you a clear sense of how to go about designing the dashboard. For this particular exercise, we wanted to present key business summary. That is what is our overall sales boxes and profitability looking like, and then get into a little bit of what's happening at our top five product level and what is the trend looking like. Because we do have lots of products at Awesome Chocolates, this information should be presented for either a specific category. Right now I'm looking at bytes category. So if I go to bars, I'll see a completely different picture presented here. And then we would also like to see who our salespeople are. We have about 20 people, how they are performing at either a category level, or if I select an individual product, then I can see sales performance for that product here. So once you decide the kind of layout that you want to go with and how your dashboard should be designed, then we can go and implement the such a design in Excel. Here I have provided a template outline for you. These kind of shapes help you put together the dashboard quickly, but you don't have to use them. You can create your own to create a shape like this. You can just go to the insert ribbon, go and shape and then draw either a rounded rectangle or any other shape. The first step for us is from this data, we would like to now create some pivot tables that will do all the number crunching. If you notice this information, we do have sales and expenses, but our final dashboard also shows profitability. Profitability is defined as sales minus expenditure divided by sales. So we first calculate our net profit and then calculate that as a percentage of sales. So in our pivot tables, we will use some simple logic to build such calculations and then use that to create all our pivot tables and charts. Select any cell in this table and then go to insert ribbon and click on pivot table option. And here is an important bit. When you are adding this pivot table, make sure that you are checking this box that says add this data to the data model. This allows us to build calculations like profit percentage quite easily. Click OK and this will add a new worksheet. We are going to name this sheet as pivots. 
all our pivot tables, all the seven of them will be built here. For our first pivot table, I would like to know what is our total sales, total boxes and what our profitability looking like. To get the total sales, we can take the sales figure and drop it into values. Because it is a number, Excel will automatically add it up. Here it is showing that in a ridiculous engineering format, but when I resize the column, I'll get the number format for that. Next, I'm going to put boxes as well. The third number that we want is our profit percentage. To do this, we need to also calculate total expenses. So I'm going to drop expenses into this thing and then that shows me that. So right now our pivot has sum of sales, sum of expenses. Given these two numbers, we can now calculate total profit. So to do this, we can go to the sales table, right click on it in the pivot table field list and use the add measure functionality. This feature will not be available if you have not checked that box add data to the data model. And here we can write a really simple formula that calculates the profit. So we'll name this as total profit. And here square brackets sum of sales minus sum of expenses. That is the logic for profit. And then we can apply currency formatting on that. And when you click OK, the total profit measure will be added to your data. You can now introduce this into the pivot table and then we can see that we have $14 million total profit. Not bad, eh? Next up, let's calculate this as a percentage of the $21 million. So one more measure and this is profit percentage and we can say total profit divide this with sum of sales. And let's put this as a number percentage format with one decimal places. Let's add that and we will get the 67.5 percentage. Now that this pivot table is built, let's just drop the fields that we no longer need. We don't need the expenses nor the profit. We just need this number, that number and that number. Let's apply some quick formatting here. All our numbers are done for the high level stuff on the dashboard. Next up, let's start preparing the dashboard. We'll add one more worksheet and name this as dashboard. Within this worksheet, I'm going to copy all our assets and paste them. This big box here will display the three key numbers, total sales, total boxes and total profit percentage. So within this box, we now will add three text boxes, one for each of those numbers. To do this, just go to insert and click on shape and select the very first shape, the text box shape and draw a text box here. Let's first do one, make it right and then copy paste it so that we can get the other two. So within this text box, select the text box, click on the formula bar, say equal to and go to the pivots page and point to the sales number. So what we are doing here is we are linking the pivot table value to the text box. Whatever the pivot table contains, that's what this text box will show. Now that we have linked that, let's apply some formatting on this. That looks great. Let's copy paste this control C, control V. And for this second one, we want to point this to the boxes. And for the third one, we want this to be our profit percentage. Whenever you change the reference of the text box, the formatting kind of gets reset. That's not a problem. We'll select the first one and click on the format painter and click on the second one. All right, the numbers look great. Let's add some labels. While the information looks great, it kind of looks a little bit dull. So let's spice it up by adding some icons next to the sales boxes and profit. This sort of thing is really easy to do if you have Excel 365. Just go to the insert ribbon and bring some icons. Let's search for a shopping cart. That's a good icon for sales. Box. Money for our profit percentage. And insert these icons. The icons look comically big. 
So let's size them. And these icons by default look in black color, but they are just like any shape. So you can apply some fill color on it. So I'm going to take the fill color same as our background color, but a little bit darker. That looks great. We'll do one final touch to this, which is just add a little bit of separator lines between these three numbers so that they look like three separate things. Again, from insert shape, take a line shape and draw a line. When you are drawing the line, if you hold the shift key, you'll get a perfect vertical line. Now let's go ahead and create the next set of pivot tables that will show me our top five products and how the trends are happening for sales, boxes and profitability, as well as the people level stuff. We'll go back to our pivot tables page and select a blank cell further down and insert our next pivot. Let's start by adding a pivot for our top five products. So we can go insert. Once you already have a data model, you don't need to go and select the data every time you want a pivot. You can directly go to the insert ribbon, click on the pivot table. Instead of directly saying pivot table, click on that little arrow and then use the from data model option. That exact word might be different depending on the version of Excel you're using. So in this pivot table, I'm going to drop my product into row label area and sales as well as total profit. This is showing me all the products. Now what I want here is if I pick a specific category, then it should show me for that category, what are the top five products. So we'll take the category field from our pivot table field list, right click on it and add it as a slicer. Whenever I tap on bars, this pivot table gets filtered down just to the bars category. Now that we have linked the slicer, let's go ahead and implement the top five filtering here. To do this, just click on that little arrow, go to value filter, top 10 and change this number to five. Next up for these five products, let's sort them in the descending order of sales. So right click on any of the sales numbers, sort largest to smallest. Finally, we don't need the grand total here. So I'm going to take that out. So we'll select this entire thing and then go to insert, click on this column chart option and insert a 2D bar chart. This looks a bit clumsy. So let's do a little bit of formatting. Before we format the chart, I want to apply some formatting on my pivot table. Right click on the sales number and go to number format and change this to currency. Next, we'll do all formatting of this on the dashboard. So I'm gonna select this chart, control exit and go to the dashboard and paste it. First thing is we are gonna get rid of all these buttons. So select the chart, go to pivot chart analyze and turn off the button option, field buttons. It already looks great once those buttons are gone. Next up, we're gonna take away this legend. Now notice that this chart shows caramel stuffed bars as the top product. That looks a little sus. So if I go to my data, we can see that actually our top product within bars category is the 99% dark and pure chocolate. Caramel stuffed bar is the top fifth one. But whenever you make a bar chart, Excel flips the values so that the topmost value is at the bottom and the bottommost value is at the top. Crazy. So select this axis, press control one to format it. And from the format axis options, use the categories in reverse order button. Next up, let's decide some of these colors. For the purpose of our dashboard, we wanted to use yellow color for all our sales, green color for all our profits. Finally, I want to blend this chart with our background shape there. So select this chart and fill this with no color and no outline. When I take out the white color, I see that these colors have a little bit of poor contrast with that blue color. So I'm going to select these bars and from the format options, go to the effects and introduce a little bit of shadow around it. Next up, we're going to resize this a little bit down and use the space about to add a title. That looks great. As we're going to use the same color for sales and profits, 
we don't probably need to write a legend here, but if you want to have a legend, you can introduce a legend now. Next, let's go ahead and make those charts for the trends. So we want to see the trend of sales boxes as well as profit. And these charts should also show for the specific category. That means they should also be linked to the category slicer. One way to cheat and do that is once you already have a pivot table that is linked to a slicer, you can copy that pivot and paste it in this second pivot. Now we are going to look at the trend of the sales. So go to the sales and add date to the row label area and take out the product. This shows the information at individual daily level. This is too much detail for us. So I'm going to take out the date as well as quarter so that we are only looking at monthly level information. So we have data up to 2022 December. So last year, if you're watching this in 2023 and then take out the profit so that we are just seeing the sales information. So this is my sales trend. I'm going to control C this and paste it once more and once again. So we have three pivot tables. This one will be for sales. In the second one, we'll take out sales and put boxes. And in the third one, we're going to put profit. We'll go to the first one, insert a line chart with markers. We'll, we'll add similar charts for boxes and profit as well. Let's move all of these to our dashboard worksheet. It looks a bit cluttery. So I'm going to select everything and size them small. Next, we'll do the same thing as earlier. Select this one and from the analyze ribbon, take out those buttons and legend as well, as well as the title. So once those additional details are all gone, then I can actually see the trend. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can actually emphasize the trend and fit that into the area there. We'll repeat the same for the bottom two as well. It already looks great and we just need to add some titles and color them according to our color scheme, which is sales is yellow, profit is green and boxes would be orange. And now let's take out the background color from this. When you take out those background colors, you might notice any imperfections in the alignment. So here is a handy trick. If you have got three charts and you want to align them perfectly, as well as space them out evenly, pick the chart that you want to start off with. For example, this looks all right to me. So I'm going to select this, go to the format ribbon and make a note of the height and width for this. So this is 1.45, 4.06. I'm going to select the other two, go to the shape format and put the same values there. So now all three have the same size, but the alignment is still a little bit off. The next thing is hold control and select all the three charts. Then go to the shape format ribbon and use the alignment options here to align them all to the same left hand side, as well as use the distribute option to space them out evenly. One more handy trick that you could also try is, especially if you have got three or four charts and they all share the same axis, like they all go from December to December. You don't need to repeat the axis all the time. So you may want to take out these axis values there so that you will give more space for the top one. Now, when I take out the axis, you can see that the charts have expanded. So this creates further alignment issues. So the way I have handled this in my final dashboard is I have made the first one a little bit bigger than the other two so that the spacing doesn't look off. So you could also try that. Next up, let's bring those titles. All right, that looks great. The last piece of our puzzle is to build this area where we are going to show our salesperson performance. To do this, we also need to make one more pivot table. So let's go back to the pivots page, copy one of these pivots, control C, go down and introduce one more pivot here by pasting that. Let's clear out this pivot and instead of product, I'm going to put salesperson into the row label area for our salesperson part of the report. This is what we want to see. We want to see the person name, 
their sales, expenses, profit, profit percentage, how many boxes they have sold, as well as a traffic light indicator next to the profit percentage. So if the profit percentage is more than 75%, it is green between 60 to 70 is amber and then anything less than 60 is red color. So let's add all the necessary bits here. And now let's sort this table so that the best person, whoever has most sales is at the top of the table. So right click on any of the sales numbers, sort largest to smallest. As this is a copy pasted pivot, if I go and click on a different category, so right now we are looking at bytes, if I switch to bars, I'll have a completely different picture here. But we don't want to stop there. We also want to link this to a specific product as well. So if I pick a different product, I would like to see for that product, what is this data looking like? So while keeping this selected from the field list, right click on the product and add that as a slicer. So we will have both category and product slicer within a category, whatever products are available, they will show up here. And if I pick a product, I can see who our best salesperson is for that product. How much is their expenses, profit, profit percentage and boxes. At this point, all the data is there. We just need to take this and push it to the dashboard. No matter what we are seeing, we will always have these 20 people. So I can select this entire range. Control C to copy this, go to the dashboard, right click on one of these cells and paste as a link. At this point, all the stuff is ready. So let's bring those slicers here as well so that everything is here and we can finalize the formatting. To do that, go back to the pivot table, select the slicer, control exit and paste it on the dashboard worksheet. I have put these yellow bars here for those slicers. So I'm going to size my slicer and place it inside. This is my product slicer. We'll do the same for category as well. Now finally, our dashboard is nearly ready. We just have to do some cosmetic bits here, but we can even test it out. If I pick a different product, you can see all these numbers change. If I now pick a different category, these graphs will change. Oh wait, what happened to these numbers? That's because whenever you change a category, that category doesn't have the previously selected product. So you must also select a different product to see the correct ones here. You can solve this with one additional pivot table, but I will leave that for you to figure out as a homework. So let's do some formatting. First, I noticed that when we pasted here, we didn't leave any row for the headers. So I'm going to select everything and move one row down and let's quickly adjust the formatting. So this should be a currency value. We want to have a bar chart that shows how big that number is. Uh, so for that purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this bit here and then move it to the next column so that we have a blank column here. And in this column, I'll just get the value from the other cell. So we have a duplicate column essentially. And then this second column we are going to use for those bars. Set these numbers as currency as well. This one will be a percentage. And this is a number with thousand separator. So all the actual formatting is done. Now let's quickly add those bars. So select these values, go to home, conditional formatting and introduce a data bar because this will be on the sales. We are going to go with that yellow color, which is for sales. So the bar gets added, but it kind of duplicates the number. So I'm going to select this again, go to conditional formatting, manage rules. And from here, click on show bar only option. We'll select these profit values, go to home conditional formatting and create a new rule. The rule will be based on an icon, but what we want is we want to show a green traffic light whenever the profit is 75% or more. Amber when it is between 75 and 65 or something, anything less than 65 is red for us. So first up, change the type from percent to number and write those numbers. I was wondering what is happening when we were copying, we have only copied the first 23 people. 
in fact here we have two more so i'm just gonna bring this data as well Control c okay that looks better next let's add some headers and apply some formatting on this table now it looks great but it doesn't kind of look blended together and we can take this box and size it so that it kind of fits within that space adjust the row height so that we will fill up this space as well yeah that looks great so now all of it is done we are just gonna go to the view ribbon and click uncheck the grid line so that those grid lines go off and we are just looking at the dashboard there's a little bit white space here so i'm gonna delete these columns so that everything comes together here and then let's uh, adjust this title you can kind of type the title here or you could use some formulas to automate this i'm gonna just uh, type the title which would be and there is our dashboard i can now click on a different product it will update the colors will automatically change because for for example chocolate called coated almonds our profitability doesn't look great um, and i can select a different category so if i go to bars i'm gonna see different graphs here of course this one is gonna all look zeros but the moment i pick a product within that category i'll again get those values correctly shown to me here let's add the final touches to it which is to add a title on the top and finally this is the finishing touch to this select this entire range and let's fill this with a dull color like something like that and that looks really great the only other changes between this and my final version that I demoed to you early on is in this I have applied some special slicer styles so that slicer also looks blended into the boxes you can see that here it kind of looks like this whereas on this it has these kind of a boxy look and then the second thing that I have done is I made these titles dynamic so if I pick a different product I'll see the title and then the third one is if I go to a different category, this one is not going to blank out. It is actually going to show you at that category level. And the title also says that. So it says sales person performance for bytes category. So I can see the performance at either a category level or a product level. Like I said, you can do all of this with some simple formulas. And I wish you all the best with implementing this style of dashboards in your workplace. And if you want to know some other cool tricks to do Excel dashboards, check out the video that is shown on the screen or my Excel dashboards playlist. I'll catch you in one of these places. Bye.